Okay, now for the big boy problems. These are uh, torque questions. So here we have a crane uh, is lowering a 426 kilogram diving bell into the water at constant velocity. Uh, I just want to point out that whenever you see words like constant velocity, those are just red flag words that you got to make sure that forces are equal because constant velocity has zero acceleration, which means that the net force has to be zero. So whenever you see constant velocity, um, you, that, that's a really important uh, phrase. So the angle theta is 18 degrees, and the distance to pivot to the left cable connects is 1.6. What's the tension in the left cable in kilonewtons? Okay. So let's just start conceptually, which is here we have the pivot point. This box right, the, the red box right here is trying to create a torque going, where do I want to draw this? Where do I want to draw this? Uh, going this way. And this, uh, this, this weight down, this, this, the tension in this uh, cable right here is balancing that torque out by producing a torque this way. And the fact that those, uh, the fact that it's lowering this thing at a constant velocity means that those two torques have to be equal to each other because you need the net force or the net torque to be zero. So we got really two jobs to do here. The first thing is we got to figure out, we'll call this torque one. We got to figure out what that torque is. And then once, and that's going to be the heavy lifting of this question, no pun intended. Uh, but then the, 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 once we have that, then it's a, kind of a straightforward matter to figure out what torque 2 is because we're going to set T1, torque 1 equal to torque 2. Um, okay, so that's just conceptually how we're going to tackle this problem. Alrighty, so I'm going to redraw um, what's happening on the, the right-hand side of this with this right here. We're going to put the little pivot right there, and we're going to put... The mass going down like this, and I'm just going to call it M for right now. We know it's 426. And we know that this distance right here is going to be 8 meters. And we know that this angle right there is 18 degrees. Okay, so that's what we're going to start with, this idea. So... Remember that torque is equal to uh, the force applied multiplied by the radial distance or the radius away from the pivot point. Again, we got to be really, really careful with this force, though, because it's we can't simply use the mg of this mass. Um, it's more technical than that. Torque is actually the part or the component of the force that's perpendicular to the lever arm. That little upside down T is like a subscript for perpendicular. So I'm going to zoom in here for a second. That if you think of the lever arm, I'm really going to focus on this part of the lever arm for a second. You can't use just simply this force because that's not perpendicular. You can only use the component of the force that's perpendicular to the lever arm. Let me just redraw this. So what we actually have to figure out is what is this, assuming that this is the right angle, right? So we got to figure out what that force is. All right, so um, we got to be a little clever about this. So I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, it is a short story, and I'm going to ruin the ending for you. Uh, this angle right here is 18 degrees. Then there's a lot of geometry, a lot of geometry, and a lot of geometry, and lo and behold, that angle is 18 degrees. There, there's the ending. I ruined the story for you. But it turns out that that angle right there, 18, these two angles are the same. And you can prove that with a bunch of geometry if you want to. If you would need that proof, I'll, 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 take, I'll make another video. But just trust me, it is, what it, it is 18 degrees. Okay. So we don't want... Let me just, ref let me just, um, I'm going to redraw this triangle a little bit just in here. So here is the lever arm. Here is the component of the force that is perpendicular. And here is the actual weight of the object going down like that. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to, instead of just drawing them, I'm just going to draw it as a dot, the whole mass. So if this part of the triangle is mg, 
and this part right there is 18 degrees, then the part of the force that's perpendicular is going to be the cosine component to, uh, of this triangle, okay? Because Sokotoa and this angle, this side we're looking for is the adjacent side to the angle. So this part of the triangle is going to be m g cos theta. <clears throat> the m is given as 426, g is 9.81, theta is 18 degrees. So we could calculate that now. So now I'm just going to zoom back out again. So the actual torque, and I should probably call this torque 1, this is going to be m g cos theta times r, and now we actually have values for everything here. Uh, the m was 426, I think, yeah. Uh, g is 9.81. Um, the cosine is 18 degrees, and r is 8. So now if you just plug these things in, I'm just going to do it real quick here. So 9, 4 times 9.81 times 8 times cos 18. And I get 31796.2 newton meters. Torque is newton meters because it's F times R, and F is in newtons and R is in meters. So that's, that's the unit for torque is newton meters. Okay, so that is uh, the torque going this way. Let me just make that big. So that was the torque going this way. That has to be balanced out now by the torque provided by this cable. These torques have to be equal because it's a constant velocity, uh, which means the acceleration is zero, which means the net force is zero, yada, 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 the torques are equal. Okay. So we can, now we got to be also careful here because notice that we have the same problem on the left-hand side that we did on the right-hand side, which is that the force is not applied perpendicular to the lever arm, All right? So these are not, it's not, it's, so we got to be careful again. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on the right-hand side and I'm going to draw that again. And here we go. So in this case now, the force downward is like this. The lever arm is like this. And this right here is 18 degrees. Just like before, when you do torque, you're interested in the force component that is per or the perpendicular to the lever arm. So let me just do that in purple for kicks and giggles. So we're interested in the component of the force going this way, right? Because it's, we want the, the, the perpendicular component of the force. So um, let me tell you a story, short story. I'll ruin the ending for you. This is 18 degrees. If you don't believe me, you can, you can spend a little time doing proofs, and you will find out that I am right, and they should have just trusted me anyways. So this um, right here is going to be the tension going downward. We are interested in this, that component right there. So this component, this component of the force right there, I'm going to zoom it over here. That is going to be whatever T is times a cosine of 18 degrees. That's going to be that component force. That component force, again, to remind you that, t, or that, that the torque on that side is equal to the perpendicular component of the force times the radial distance away, and that was given as 1.6. So the torque 2 is the tension in the cable times the cosine of the angle times 1.6. Um, we know that this torque has to be equal to the previous torque, so we know that this has got to be equal to 31796.2. And now you can see that the only thing you don't know is the, thing you're, uh, is the tension in that cable, which you can solve for directly now. So here we go. Uh, take the, the right-hand side, divide it by 
uh, 1.6 uh, times a cosine of uh, 18 degrees, so 1.6 times cosine 18. And I get the tension on that one to be 20,895.3, excuse me, newtons. And is that what it's asking for, just the tension? And kilonewtons, okay. Kilonewtons, that'll be 20.9 kilonewtons. Ta-da!